11 and today I am recording the house of hell well, that was an impression of a Dracula thing monster you may see I have face cam down here somewhere yes and I'm playing this on my phone the setup is complicated I sent I, I showed a Twitter thing, I showed a picture of, on Twitter of my setup and the red light here. I set this up as well, it gives me like a creepy atmosphere. Anyways, I think we're ready to play. I hope this is recording. Good. Okay, um, oh, sh sorry. Uh, I need to tilt the screen. most of this, but some of this I've, I've already played this game by the way, so I'll know quite a few things. House of Hell is a fighting fantasy game book, an interactive adventure in which you are the hero. You can only win through by... wait a second... Uh, where was I? Okay, you can only win through by choosing the correct path finding equipment, avoiding traps, and surviving combat. House of Hell is a little different from other fighting fantasy adventures. You start your adventure unarmed, with no provisions or potions, and you have to avoid being frightened to death. I think that's possible in real life, getting frightened to death. Unless I'm just being dumb. I'm really dumb. Before starting House of Hell, you must choose from one of three difficulty settings. The game book has been designed for optimum challenge on hardcore medium something something. Okay, I'm not I really don't want to read this. Hardcore mode, it's really hard. You can pause to read the rest if you want. Medium mode, you, you get some help. And free read mode, you can heal yourself, you, you just read it. I wanna go for hardcore mode. Okay. You have chosen hardcore mode. Before embarking on your adventure, you must first determine your own strengths and weaknesses. To see how brave, lucky, resourceful you are, you must use dice to determine your initial skills, stamina, luck, and luck scores. Your skill, okay, so we're going to do skill, so we're going to roll a dice. Okay, so... Five. Your, you, your roll, five... What? Your roll of 5 plus a base of 6, 11 skill. I think that's good. Okay, now stamina. Okay, we could have rolled stamina. Oh, that is shit. We've got 14. Okay, luck. The higher the luck, the better, of course. Not bad, 10. Fear. You want this to be as large as possible, or else you're going to die to death. Die to death, get scared to death. 11. Not bad. Okay. Good luck. We all need it. Okay, so we're starting now. Okay, so I'm going to read all of this, of course, because after all, this is the point of the game. Reading this. The rain... S I'm not good at reading. The rain spatters the windscreen relentlessly. You can see no more than a watery gloom as you strain forward. I, I can hardly even see this. Forward over the steering wheel to see the road ahead. Although the wipers flat valiantly, they are fighting a losing battle as the rain drives harder and harder. Your foot eases off the accelerator. The headlights struggle to light up the road. Damn! You curse the white-haired old man who sent you off along this bumpy track. Probably he, he meant the second turning on the left, or even a right turning, old fool. Perhaps that's the idea of a joke, after all. Didn't you notice a mischievous glint in his eye? Something vaguely sinister? I don't know. But what sort of nonsense is this? 
So you've taken a wrong turn and got caught in downpour in the night? The rain will ease off soon. It can't possibly keep up this del deluge for long. Is that how you say it? What, what does that mean? And then you'll be able to watch out! <laughs> you spin the wheel frantically to the left to avoid the figure who, from nowhere, shows up in the headlights. The car bumps and jolts as it bounces over the rocky roadside and thumps into a ditch. You collect your thoughts. You are unhurt, but shaken. Then you remember what happened. The body! You must have hit the figure that appeared. There was no, there was no way you could have avoided him. You spring out the car, praying that he is still alive. Your clothes soak up the rain as you hobble back to the road. In the darkness it is difficult to see anything, but there is no sign of a body. You consider the situation. Are you certain that is, it was someone and not a trick of light? Yes, you can remember the arms held up in fright as the car collided, and the look of anguish on his face. His face! There was something familiar about that face. A man you recognise. An old man, with white hair. Your heart leaps. No! Impossible! With a shiver of fear, you race back to the car, jump aside, force the key into the ignition, and twist it violently. The starter coughs, splutters, and dies. You hit the key again, and this time a single shudder is, is all the engine can manage. You grasp the wheel with your hands and shake it desperately as if it to force some life into the car, but the battery is dead. Your car is certainly not budging from the ditch tonight. Your situation is hopeless, but now the, but now the plight of your car is paramount. Where can you get help? You passed a garage at Mingleford, Ford, Mingleford, but that was some twenty miles away. As if in answer, a light appears in the distance. Someone has switched on a bedroom light. What a stroke of luck. It was at least fifteen miles back that you passed the last house and you happened to have broken down just a short distance from someone's home. You button up your coat and open the door. From outside the car you can see the building more clearly, just ahead, on the left. A drive win winds, winds up, winds up to a large house. It, it's a good five minutes walk away, and by the time you reach it, you will be drenched. But how else would you call the garage? You can't afford to miss tomorrow's appointment. No, go you must. Anyway, you'll probably be able to dry off inside, phoning the garage, the garage, the garage however you say it. You slam the door, turn up your coll oh crap. You you slam the door, turn up the turn up your collar and set off to the house. A flash of lightning lights up clearly for you. But in the preoccupation with the rain, the warning from above is wasted on you. The house is old, very old, and in a shocking state of repair. The light in the window is flickering, most likely an oil lamp, certainly not electric. And you don't notice the fact that they might have turned you back anyway. What? Sorry, I, I'm, I'm failing to read this. There's no telephone line going to the house. As you climb the steps to the front door, little do you realise the fate in the story. Tonight is going to be a night to remember. Yeah, that was my creepy face. Oh no, um, click. Okay, this is a very fancy picture. It's a very nice. I like the artist who ever made this. It's a very f nice drawing. Oh, sorry. You climb to the creaking steps of the front door and pause to catch your breath. Even though you, you ran all the way up to the drive from the car, you are soaked through. Your feet are particularly wet. Judging by the number of your puddles, you stepped into the dark. You dry the drive needs a small fortune spending on repairs. But under the porch, you are out of the storm, and you brush the rain from your clothes before turning towards the door. The rain is still pelting down, but an eerie silence hangs in the air. No lights are on downstairs. You step back off the porch to check the upstairs window which attracted your attention earlier. Nothing. 
no lights. The whole place seems to be deserted. But then you remember the time, five minutes to midnight. Everyone in the house has probably gone to bed. An owl hoots in the distance, and a shiver runs down your spine. The situation is a little scary. Here you are in the middle of nowhere, at some strange, run-down old house about to wake up whoever lives inside at midnight. They certainly won't be too pleased. But you have no choice if you are going to make your appointment tomorrow. You must reach a telephone to call for help. You step up to the front door.